In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to do a screencast. I'm not only gonna show you the applications I use, but I'll also quickly walk you through a screen recording I did for one of my videos. So first, let's start with the applications. So you can go to Google and type in OBS project, and you should see it as the first one, open broadcaster software or obsproject.com. And then depending on what you have, go ahead and click that. It should start downloading right away. Go through the installation process and then let's open it. Okay, so after you've downloaded OBS, open it up and you should see something like this. It's just like the screen recording is showing what it's screen recording, so therefore it continuously mirrors itself, which is pretty interesting to look at. But in order to start recording, simply click the start recording button. Um, if you want to be using a specific mic, we want to go into settings. So click settings and then we go into audio. And then for me right now, I'm using my Yeti stereo microphone. So the mic auxiliary audio device right here is exactly where, exactly what I want it to be. If you want to use your computer microphone, then use built-in microphone. And then, so let's just go to output real quick. There's a few things you can change like the recording format. Right now it's on MOV. Um, you can change it to MP4 to save space or any other file that you want. You can also go on video to make sure that the output is 1080p. And you can also change the FPS value if you want to. I'll just keep it at 48. And make sure you click OK, otherwise these options will not save. And then one final thing, make sure that OBS is scaled into this black area right here. Otherwise, you will not see your full screen. And that's pretty much it on how to use OBS. Okay, now I'm going to use OBS to show you guys how to use QuickTime. QuickTime is essentially the easiest way to screen record using your Mac. And the best part is that it comes with the Mac. So after you open up QuickTime Player, click on File, and then click on New Screen Recording. Once this thing shows up, you can tell that my voice is also being recorded by clicking on Yeti stereo microphone or whatever microphone you have connected. Uh, make sure this is um, all the way down, otherwise you will hear some echoes. And then all you need to do is click this button and then you start screen recording. And after you stop the recording, you'll be able to find your file by just clicking file and show recordings. And it should show you where all your recordings are by date. Now that you know how to record your screen and do a voiceover at the same time, let's talk about a few tips that can help make your screencast experience easier and better. I'll be using my own screencast video, how to edit a whiteboard animation in Premiere Pro as an example throughout these tips. Firstly, let's talk about different approaches for your video in terms of visuals and audio. The first method, you can screencast while you talk. This method is the most authentic, but will be more difficult to do since you'll be talking on the spot. Of course, you can have a script prepared and next to you while you record to make it easier. The next method is to do the voiceover first and then screencast. This is probably one of the easiest ways to approach it since you can screen record exactly what you're talking about while listening to what you're saying. And if you're a bit slow, you can easily speed it up by editing the clip. And finally, method three is to do the screencast first and talk over it afterwards. From my experience, this one is a bit harder to manage because you're reacting to what you're seeing compared to the previous method, which acts on what you're hearing. For the screencast I did, I used method one. This is because my video is essentially a walkthrough of how I edited my whiteboard video in Adobe Premiere Pro. After finishing the recording and voiceover, we move on to the editing of the video in post. Recording the screen is probably the easy part. Doing the voiceover though will take some time to get used to and is a skill that improves with practice. So Adobe Premiere Pro is my choice. So if you're wondering how I so if you're wondering how I make all my videos, luckily during post, we have the opportunity to fix any audio that we don't like and match the video better with the audio. Editing is a huge part in making your screencast concise and watchable. For my video, it took a total of about 15 hours to complete from start to finish. And the editing in post took up a huge chunk of that 15 hours. 
Of course, take note that I created a 34 minute video, so you might want to scale down that time according to how long your video will be. One tip that I highly recommend you follow is to zoom while you're editing rather than during your screen recording. This also includes moving your screen left and right, um, up and down, sort of like a scrolling effect. It's just much better to do in post rather than while you're screen recording. Once you've imported everything into Premiere and sorted the footage in order, you want to clean up and optimize your audio. What I do is connect the audio clips to Audition. It's much easier to edit the audio in Audition than Premiere for me. I edit the audio by itself to really clean it up and redo any errors. And then I manipulate the screen recording to match up the visuals with the audio. After all the visuals are matched up with the cleaned up audio, I do any final edits such as zooming in as I mentioned earlier. To summarize the steps, step one, record screen and voice. Step two, sort in Premiere Pro. Step three, clean up the audio. Step four, match the visuals with the audio. Step five, final edits. Now for some tips that I think can really improve your experience. Tip number one, plan for breakpoints. If you're doing a long recording, your computer's fan will most likely get really loud and your computer very hot. Also, you'll probably get pretty tired at a certain point and it's good to have planned breaks to make sure that your performance in the voiceover is as good as it was in the beginning of the video. Seriously, wearing headphones for like two hours straight frustrates my ears. Tip number two. This was part of the steps, but if it wasn't clear, get the skeleton first of your video and then do some retakes for some perfect runs and smooth teaching. Don't expect to actually get perfect runs the first time around. It will take some time and will be a good amount of work if you want your screencast to be good. And my final tip, as cheesy as it is, have some fun with it. A screencast is essentially a demonstration and if you're teaching something, it's better to have fun with it than teaching in a dry way. Hopefully this video helps you out with any screencast or screen recording type videos you have in mind. This is episode 4 of my Creator Tool series. If the video was helpful, consider giving it a like. So we're going to enter phase 2 of the video, which is essentially a behind the scenes walkthrough of how I created my screencast video. We'll highlight the two most important things which are editing and how I clean up my audio. Right now I'm in the middle of editing my screencast for Premiere Pro. Um, what I did so far is just the first about 1 minute and 30 seconds. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys the process of the steps that I outlined earlier. So right now we're in the second step of editing in Premiere Pro. And the third step is to bring the audio into Adobe Edition. Since we recorded at the same time as the screen recording, uh, most of the audio right here it's going to be filled up with me stumbling and making a lot of mistakes, which is normal and natural unless, you know, you practice this and you do it a lot to the point where you hardly make any mistakes. But I'm not quite there yet, so I do need to edit my audio if I want the screencast to be good. And I do want it to be good, so let's go ahead and right click and replace with After Effects composition. Uh, just kidding. Um, edit clip in Adobe Audition. I was actually thinking about my earlier video. Awesome. This is not an Adobe Audition tutorial. Um, I might make one eventually, but for now, what I want to do is just optimize the audio. So after it's done saving, I'm basically just going to listen back to the clip and edit out anything that, um, any stumbles, any mistakes that I made, anything that was just part of the video that was unnecessary. So I didn't really like the way I said it here. So what I can do is, since I have a mic in front of me, I can just record again and then re-say it. So I might, I might as well do that. And the right side is a dedicated Dreamlit folder, which contains some assets and other stuff that I use for the channel. Yeah, so I'm basically gonna repeat this process for a very long time. Um, probably about 50 something minutes. As you can see, this process does take a long time, but if you want your screencast to be as good as possible, then you gotta put in some work. And I finally got it to about 17 minutes, which is still a little too long, and that took a really large amount of time just to cut all of it. Um, I might cut more of it later, but for now, this will have to do. Okay, so, 
We have done quite a lot for the screen recording for my Adobe video so far. Right now, I have finished cutting everything and doing all the audio work in Adobe Audition. As you can see, there's a bunch of edited clips. For the most part, they're all around the same audio level. But right now, I wanted to just go over a point that I made earlier about the rule of recording first and then editing it in order to zoom in. So for instance, I start using the zoom at this point in my video. You can see that originally I was here and then once I play it, There's a zoom. Right now it's lagging because the computer, but overall I just use keyframes for the scale and position. Um, if you want to learn more about keyframing, um, I do mention it in my video. Um, but for the most part, we just scale, we just keyframe scale and position. Um, we want to make sure we keyframe the initial position and scale, and then the second one will be. Um, where uh, we wanted to zoom to. So for instance, we have to move both because if you were to just move scale, for instance, and you'd just zoom into the middle. And after, um, when you normally do keyframes, they look like this, but I highlighted it, right clicked temporal interpolation, and then I clicked on Bezier, and easy, ease in and ease out also work quite well. But you can see. You can either right click and then unlink it, and then now that I'm that zooming in and out, the other. and um, also left and right. Right now in the screen recording, it's gonna look a little um, rough, but it will be smoother once I render the clip. But yeah, that's essentially what I mentioned earlier about editing it afterwards. And that's pretty much it for the quick walkthrough of the two most essential things for screencasting. If you guys have any questions about any specific things, ask me in the comments. If you have any suggestions for the next videos, also let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one.